Rod Babers has played in the game. He's been a part of Texas at OU, covers OU as well, and uh, he joins us Texas. on 360. Texas, excuse me. My God, he may hang up on us. Uh, he uh, he joins us now on 365 Sports. Rod, can you try to describe what the week is like? Can it still try to be the same week? Is it difference? How much difference when you play this game? Uh, yeah, it's, it's not like every other week. That's, <laughs> that's for sure. First of all, thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, it's not like every weekend, especially, you know, if you're looking at it from the OU side, and I've been on that side where, you know, one of these games I was embarrassed, <laughs> and we were uh, basically ashamed of our uh, performance in that matchup in 2000 when Oklahoma just put an Old Testament-style butt-whipping on us. That's what Texas did to Oklahoma last season. I can guarantee Oklahoma's been obsessing about this game the entire offseason, uh, and I guarantee you Brent Venables and his staff have been obsessing about it. They, they spent extra time preparing for this game plan. Uh, I'm sure Texas had done the same, but Texas had Alabama early on, so they couldn't totally spend their offseason devoted to uh, the juggernaut, uh, which is Oklahoma. But Oklahoma could do that for Texas because they really they had the luxury of being able to do that. So I expect Oklahoma to come out, uh, you know, with all all their firepower, guns are blazing early on. I think you're going to see the, the fight from Oklahoma early on because they know they got to match the energy from Texas. So Texas, at this point, based on – I think the, the, the analysis of the matchup, they're just a more talented football team right now. Rod, what is the key to not getting too keyed up for this individual game as a player in it? Uh, I think being a veteran helps, right? Uh, and when you look at the you look at the quarterbacks, right? Uh, there's a great stat that if you look at first time starters for quarterbacks in the Texas Oklahoma game going up against starting quarterbacks who have experience in the Texas OU game. There only been four first-time starters who've beaten a veteran uh, starter from the Texas OU game in all of its history. All right, so you got right now Dylan Gabriel, who's going to be a first-time starter in this game, going up against Quinn Ewers, who's already started, had a spectacular performance last year. I think it's something about being able to handle the emotion because the environment is so unique. Right, you got the fans and the split, uh, the, the fans and the stands split right down the middle. Uh, is that a neutral site? Uh, that neutral site is the Texas State Fair. Uh, there's so much uh, vitriol and angst between the two uh, two squads, two programs. So I do think uh, handling the emotion. Uh, sometimes it's really tough for young players. That's why even on the Texas side, we've seen young teams get blown out in these games. Uh, and that's because I don't think they understand the rules of engagement, the magnitude uh, of the of the platform that is Texas OU. And sometimes, you know, it, it overwhelms them. Dylan Gabriel, though, is different because uh, he's a six-year guy. I mean, he's been a uh, quarter, uh, veteran quarterback and in that system for a long time, just not in this game. But this game is unique. Even guys like Dan Neal told me who played in the Super Bowl that, hey, man, he would compare Texas OU to, to the Super Bowl that he played in in terms of how emotionally charged the environment is. And guys like Big Red, Keith Moreland, legendary lifetime Longhorn, told me he's, he's been on the – He'd been in the World Series at the plate in the World Series in clutch time, uh, and he felt the same emotions that he felt in the Texas OU game at that time. That's the only thing he could compare it to. So it definitely has that unique emotional charge. Yeah, and it's it's interesting too because you know Gabriel's a guy who if there's you know little little slights to him, it's like the the big game performances, and this is the biggest game he's played in in, in his six years. So that's going to be fascinating. And sticking with that that Oklahoma offense, Rod. I mean, obviously he's able to do some nice things through the air. They've got a a burgeoning wide receiver core, some guys uh, like Anthony that are, that are stepping up and making plays. Nick Anderson. Um, the run game though has been a little bit more of an issue, kind of still figuring that out. It seems like. Um, with Texas defense, what what stands out as far as what Oklahoma might try to do? What are potential weaknesses? What are strengths? Uh, yeah, I mean, this is interesting. Uh, I think most Longhorn fans that I've talked to, and if you watch the film on Texas, you're worried a little bit about the deep ball. Uh, there are some teams that have been able to attack Texas vertically down the field, specifically Texas safety. Texas rotating a few safeties, uh, and guys, some, some of those guys have been attacked. Uh, vertically. Uh, uh, Bama did it against Texas. Even Baylor was able to do it against Texas. Even Kansas last week uh, took a vertical shot, a post route on one of Texas safeties and got a touchdown. 
And Texas had to face backup quarterbacks, right, the last three weeks. I mean, what are the odds, guys, that you face backup quarterbacks three weeks in a row? I mean, I mean, TC, TC, you at least got to knock them out last year. Texas has been able to face backup quarterbacks. He's the best quarterback Texas will face. And they've been a little bit vulnerable to that deep ball. Ryan Watts, the boundary corner who's starting for Texas, he's day-to-day dealing with an injury. Uh, If he doesn't uh, start for Texas or if he has to leave that game, that's a freshman, Malik Muhammad. Malik Muhammad is probably going to be behind him. I just talked about how young players, they, they, they struggle with, uh, you know handling the emotion of this game. If you're Oklahoma, you're going to go, first of all, you're going at Ryan Watts anyway, because he's coming off an injury. Uh, and then second, you're going after the freshman that's coming right behind him, playing in the biggest game of his career with inexperience. And Dylan Gabriel, one of the things he's really good at, guys, is the deep ball. Right? He's, he's completed nearly 60% of his passes 20 yards or more down the field. So they stress you horizontally, right, formationally, when they have those wide splits, those wide receivers, and then they're going to stress you vertically with a deep shot. That's how they try to make the run game work, try to make you play with light boxes, put, put your uh, safeties in no man's land, get them stranded so they're late to, the, to running the alley to support the run. Take this safeties, Jalen Catalan specifically, he's really good at depth supporting the run, coming up and running the alley. I think he's the guy that's going to play a lot in this matchup. Rod, you, we mentioned and asked about the week of and, and how hard it, it's not just another game. It, it is Texas OU. What is it like and you've experienced both winning in this game and also after you've played the game and it's in you lose. Is it is that different? Is it sick to your stomach feeling? Yeah, it, unfortunately, it feels like the end of the season. <laughs> if not, you really got to you gotta pull yourself off the mat. And I unfortunately, I lost more than I won in this matchup. And I do remember that feeling because it, it, it's, such, it's such a huge uh, emotional letdown. I just talked about the emotion of it. And, you know, you, and, and when I was playing, guys, in I think 99 was my first year. That was the, the Mike Leach banana in the tailpipe dummy, dummy script game that we <laughs> fell for and got down double digits and found a way to win. In 2000, uh, Bob Stoops comes along, wins the national title in his second year, and then they take this matchup, Texas OU, uh, back to the, the the magnitude and the greatness that it should have been. And there was always national title implications. The winner would be catapulted into the national title conversation, and the loser would basically have to sit and wait on these forces around them and the football gods to, uh, to, to throw them some luck and have their favor so that's what you don't want you want to be able to control your own fate it happens in this matchup and one thing to watch guys is the momentum in this game it's so unique because the, the fans and the stands are split right down the middle the momentum shifts are just so drastic everything's amplified but when uh, one team grabs the momentum you got to grab it back remember when caleb williams took that fourth down 60 mm-hmm. something yards for a touchdown texas was up what 20 something i think three touchdowns yeah. in that game and you could tell it was palpable the momentum shift and texas never quite took it back in oklahoma they just they, they maintained it for a long time you have to be able to take that momentum back if not it's hard to gather it back because you can feel the letdown of one side of that stadium and the overwhelming joy of the other rod how do you expect to see defenses maybe adjust to the fact that quinn ewers can run a little bit and maybe people didn't realize that before yeah, that's just unfair, isn't it? I, we didn't realize it either. Uh, I think, and I think Stark has, Stark has encouraged him, guys. Like, if they're going to give you green grass and disrespect your athleticism and take it, he lost about 20 pounds. Everybody knows that. Uh, and I talked to uh, Todd Dodge a couple of weeks ago, and Todd Dodge told he ran track in high school. Who knew that? Uh, I guess he just wasn't very good, so nobody would have paid attention. But he can run. That is an element to his game now. And I think specifically he can help Texas guys in the red zone. The red zone is one of the few places where Texas struggles. Watch this in this game. If Brent Venables wants to play bend but break defense, that could be a problem for Texas. They're 108th in the country in touchdown percentage in the red zone. Field goal percentage are struggling too because Bert Auburn has been missing some easy field goals or easier field goals, I should say. So that might be a problem. You ain't got to stop Texas necessarily in between the 20s if you can bow your back in the red zone when that field shrinks. That's where Texas is having some trouble scoring. We, we can't really explain it. It doesn't make sense. But they're so explosive that they haven't had to really worry about it because they're scoring from outside the red zone so much. Rod, with that running game, uh, Jonathan Brooks and his emergence over these these last three weeks especially, I mean, I know he was kind of pegged as the guy going in, but obviously there's a lot of talk about the young running backs as well, and the, the, you know, the stars and all of that. Um, but just how important has that been to see him just become that guy, uh, so to speak? And what have been your impressions of, of just, you know, the run that he's been on, so to speak? Oh, yeah, it's unbelievable, guys. I mean, post-Bijan and Rojo, I mean, we had no idea 
that the running game was going to be a strength for the team. The assumption was that the running game, you know, was going to be a complementary piece to the passing game with all those weapons, J.T. Sanders, A.D. Mitchell, and X-Men. But now you're talking about the running game being a strength. Now you have to actually allocate resources to stop the running game. That's a mathematical equation, guys, that most defense, defensive coordinators can't solve. They can't double X-Men, put a safety over the top of J.T. Sanders, and decide to stuff the box to stop the run. And that's what makes the job for a start easier and it makes Quinn Ewers' job a whole lot easier. And does not discount the offensive line, guys. The maturity of this group, I mean, they average about 325 pounds, biggest offensive line in the Big 12. Uh, the massive Big Humans Project, Sark talks about, is actually coming to fruition. Hey, Rod, uh, I appreciate the passion and more. As a guy that played at Texas, and obviously you bleed burnt orange, when you have to give an opinion about them, when it's been a tough game or there's, I mean, do you ever get any blowback from that at all? Oh yeah. I've gotten plenty, man. <laughs> I've gotten plenty. I've gotten plenty from the 40 acres behind the burnt orange curtain itself. Uh, and I've gotten some fans too. that think I'm a little too negative, but you know, this is the way this season is so special because I don't really have to be negative. There's not a lot of bad things to say about this team. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, it's a lot of substance to this team. And I'm not going to say Texas back. I'm not going to go that far and scare people. But I will say that I think this team is for real. Uh, and so I've been pretty positive. I've been more positive than most of the fans this year. They, they're so used to negativity, guys. They've been yep. looking for stuff to complain about. They've been like, hey, what's up with the rotation of wide receivers? I'm like, do you really care about that? Do you beat Bama? Who right. gives a damn? Yeah. The rotation of wide receivers. <laughs> No, I get it. I, I get it and love the truth serum. That's why we have you. We appreciate your time. Anything else? Uh, Rod Babers, former Texas corner, and covers them as well with a couple of different media outlets, including uh, the Horn down in Austin. We appreciate it, Rod. Have a great weekend. Have fun. Hey, thanks you guys for having me on. Anytime you need me, you yes, me sir. Know. Yes, sir. Rod Babers uh, also uh, is also a part of what is on Texas football. Uh, at on Texas football with analysis of UT. Yeah, so uh, 